Hello everyone, I'm Jane Hanlon, the Mortgage Code Manager for AdviseWise and today's Ask Jane, I'm joined by Peter Barton from Ashford's and we'll be discussing the process and also covering off vulnerability of clients. So hello Peter and welcome Hi, to Ask Jane. Uh, first question is why um, the process please? Um, what's the process with Ashford's when you first receive an instruction? Well, thank you Jane and, and thank you all for joining. Um, now, once we receive instruction by the instructor and the advisor wise, um, within 24 hours, we open our farm. You will receive notification from us. Hopefully you're on the portal. If you're not on the portal, then please do those notes straight away on a new portal. Um, we will contact you to say we've received instruction and to notify you who the case handler is. Um, we will make contact with the client. It's always important on your instruction to us if you say that if, if clients are IT savvy and have email addresses and also they're able to print things off or view things because you know most of the country have an email address but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can open the email so please, please give us some gauge as to whether it's best to post the letters or whether to email them. Um, from that first email you know, we, we send out to the clients obviously our, our cost letter which obviously we advise wise is, is a superb price. Um, we also send out our, our team sheets and our leaflets saying who, who we're dealing with. And we, and we send a question into the, or two questions to the clients. The first one, which they can complete online, submit to us and upload it to the portal you want to, or email to us, or it comes back, which asks for a number of security questions so we can speak to them on the telephone. And also ask all that information that we will need from them to get the case through to completion. So questions such as are there occupiers in the property? There's a mortgage, if so, what's the account number? Um, there's you know, one, of the, one of the questioners asked about the bank details. You know, in that cover letter, we also ask for things like identification, press insurance, um, utility bill, um, and bank statement. Now, we don't need those original documents sent to us. I always ask, keep a nice pile by the side of your chair ready for when we come in to see you, and we will copy and certify them at that meeting. So that's the first lesson done. Clients ideally would send questioners back to us, but nothing else. And we then sit back and wait for the offer. If we've not had the offer in a fortnight, we will contact you, the advisor, and say, is everything okay, just in case something's gone awry. Um, ideally, you'll contact us when you've got your copy of the offer and the client has their copy, because you'll get it a few days before us. Then put us on notice to watch out for it, because there have been occasions where um, it's been sent to the clients, but not, we've not received our copy, so we can then chase them in the solicitors. Now, the real work at Ashford starts once we get the offer, it's, it's, like, it's like a factory putting all the lights on the, bu the buzz of the machines. The offer comes in, in with us. Instantly, we um, check the client's questionnaire and see what they've said as to how they want to be seen. Um, and we, we operate a, a mobile tracking system team of 25 tracking solicitors that cover the whole of the country. Um, we will make contact with one of the tracking solicitors to contact the client and let the client know that we'll be contacted by, for example, Jane or Chetman or John, whoever. Um, we then um, send the papers off to the travel solicitors. We let you know that we've got the offer and the payments were made. And we send a, a full report on the offer over to the clients, um, together with copies of the documents. So, they're not, so nothing, is, nothing is a surprise to them that we've got, this, we've got somebody turning up the documents um, and they've not seen those documents. So we get a chance to put them into contact with us if they're on the cruise. Um, the, once the travel service make contact, they'll be coming to see the, to see the clients within five days of contact, unless the clients, of course, want to wait longer. During that meeting, um, our team are turning up with um, masks on, um, hand gel, and they will only use their own pen. And documents are contained in a sterile unit. Um, and gloves will be worn when transferring over um, documents. During that meeting, all the documents are um, Addressed, the client is taken through all of those, explaining the legal implications of those documents, identification, etc. It's all copied, left with the customer. We don't take anything away with us. Um, we'll pick up any question, any questionnaires, and deal with any special conditions of the offer at that meeting. Um, when the client's happy, they sign doc, all documents are signed over at that meeting. Um, I must also mention that the travel solicitors um, record the meeting on their telephones. So we have a, a visual recording for posterity, which is saved to our systems. 
from this client's, of course, object. Um, I don't see why clients would object, but um, here's what we do. Um, all the documents are scanned back to us by the traveling solicitors straight into our system, so we can start with them even before the traveling solicitors got home. And also special next day delivered to us on, within 24 hours of the meeting. Of course, there are meetings at seven o'clock at night, they won't send off until the following day. Once we have the papers back, we then schedule them up to send off to every change on NAT or Optima or Beryl Smith, and they're sent off by email and by special next day delivery. Um, and if anything's outstanding, we can change the plan for it. Um, we then usually have um, a period of time um, where we're waiting for the lender solicitors to come back to us to set conclusion or dealing with any requisitions which we, we notify you of. All of this is gone to the portal, and if, anything, if any requisitions are arranged, we'll let you know. And certainly, if you can help us with them, we will also ask you about the help of the things that we know the answer to. Once completion has been set, we notify you, we contact you to see whether you've got any, any fees to be paid, um, and we notify the client that completion is taking place. And then, day completion, we call the client as soon as the money has been sent to them so they're aware, and we send a completion statement through. Um, that's in a, in, a, in a nutshell, a very, very large nutshell, that's the process. So that sounds pretty good to me, very streamlined. Um, I should mention that we do have the deal with you um, for standard uh, remortgage business, mm -hmm. which is £650, which includes the VAT, standard disbursements and the home visit. So leading me on to the home visit, why do you actually use mobile solicitors? Well, um, obviously, as our offices are largely in the south and southeast, and we are a national firm, Historically, always used um, local solicitors for the, for the remote signings. We've, we've always, even before the um, before the equity risk comes to change the rules to insist on a legal witness, we, several years before then we were using local solicitors to provide the service, but the quality was never, never how we wanted it to be. Um, so we took the view that we wanted to you know, recruit a team of people who are very similar to myself. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, Jane. Um, so my, I have a similar myself who recruited 25 people, all had training for myself, sat in with interviews with me, with clients, so they can see how I operate, to provide a, a friendly and professional service. And the reason we've done it is, you know, we can monitor the quality of the advice being given to the customers. And we also provide specific vulnerability training to our mobile solicitors as we feel in the last five years, vulnerability of clients has become such a bigger issue. So whilst obviously as advisors out there, we'll, you know, if you have any concerns, we want to be told straight away. So you know, if you have concerns, we can support a line, you let us know, and we will make our own judgment call. On that, and all my traveling solicitors team are hot on the issue of traveling on vulnerability. And if they have any concerns, you know, if, if they think it's borderline, they'll, they'll roll out, as I call them, the big guns, which is me. And I'll, wherever they are in the country, I will go and see the clients just to see whether it's able to sign. Um, if, if that's not possible or if it's too far, we will get to, um, but everyone's adamant that they don't have capacity. We'll ask for a doctor's report um, to confirm capacity otherwise. But, but the, the whole point behind mobile services was to ensure a good, consistent quality of service but also particularly to watch out for vulnerability. And it also gives us the ability to, to record meetings, which I think is very important, because it protects the clients, so that um, you know, if they're worried it's really challenging what they've done later on, they can be recording and then laughing and joking with our traveling team. Um, it also protects um, the financial advisor for any, any claims in the future. It also helps me monitor what my traveling says is, whether they dress smartly, whether they've been given to bed inappropriate, um, and that sort of thing. So well, we've had very good feedback, I have to say, and I didn't realise you had as many as 25, I think you we, mentioned that. We do. We, we've got three in Yorkshire. So, um, you know. Well, that's good, isn't it? It is. Activity it is. north north there. Exactly. And not just the southeast. No, we, so, are, we, are, we are broadly split. Eight in the south, um, eight up to, to the top end of the Midlands, and eight up north. So we go all the way up to the borders. That's excellent. So that's that's encouraging. Um, do, do you ever encounter any objections to the home visits at all that someone would prefer to go in the office? <sighs> well, we will. Clients are always more than welcome to go in the office. I, we, I personally see clients in the office as well as at home. Um, in the last, the only time I've seen objections to home visits has been in the last few months during, during the lockdown. And there are people that are 
you know, are concerned about um, catching COVID-19. Uh, we have obviously held meetings in garden, in people's gardens, through windows, in porches and conservatories. Um, I must say, in in in, in a, not, not, I, I don't view us actually as in a post-lockdown world yet. Pre-lockdown world, we've, we've, we've never had any objections to a home visit. Um, I did have one person recently um, who was insisting on only coming to the office and didn't want a home visit at all, and not because of vulnerability. And that, and I said to the advisor at the time, that raises real alarm bells with me. Because why why were they sent to your home? And I was quite concerned that the case was fraudulent and that they weren't really residing there, that they were intercepting the posts. So I do tend to be, you know, one of my alarm bell checkers, shall we say, Jenny, if clients are objecting. We, 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 you know, I'm not saying people have to justify why we can't things even at home. Um, but certainly, yeah, I think it's one of those that I would be I would be cautious about and I don't, I'd want to speak to clients myself. Well, that's a very good point, actually. It's not something that I'd even thought of. Yeah. So, I mean, it hasn't been obviously easy for you, but you've managed to overcome. And I think we're one of the few industries that have kept going through yeah. COVID. Um, so I have to sort of uh, express my uh, delight, really, because you've kept <laughs> us all in a job, um, to be honest, um, where others have been furloughed. So even though it's been slower, you know, to keep going, yes. has uh, been excellent. So do you find that the actual home visits actually speed up the process? Yeah. Oh, they, 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 they do. I mean, we can collect everything in one go, um, which, which always always works well. And certainly, again, I, I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm, I'm, I like being in control. Actually, by us having that meeting, we, we can fix a meeting with the clients. You know, in the old days, we'd send out the pack to the clients and say, there you go. You know, get this document signed. Three weeks ago, by, we won't hear anything. Eventually, after four weeks, the clients will say, well, we have a that will do it. And then we so we're on the back of the be the travel system really does help. It also means that if things were missed or clients need a visit, we can easily do that. So it really, it really does help them do it all in one go. We know that our team is asked for all the right things um, and it keeps us in control, not necessarily when the appointment is, but that the appointment is happening um, because the delay that you know, the clients are the ones causing the delay. Well, it seems to work really well because obviously your office staff have got to work with the, with your mobile mm. team um, and it seems to be working extremely well from the feedback that we get, um, mm. having it just instructed one in the last 10 minutes for you. So, yeah. Um, so what's the difference with the lenders now with COVID? Are they asking for any more uh, additional information? Um, are the turnaround times changed? Um, what have you noticed since sort of March, uh, beginning of March to, to today? Right, well, so they, they did relax, thank you, but they, they certainly did relax some of their signing requirements, not so much on the client side, because they, they more or less broadly still wanted all the documents signed by the clients and saying, I want, I'm, I'm still insist on the, the wetting copy, you know, the originals. But right. Side, the documents that I, Peter, would have to sign off, which would normally be the legal promises, they have for that to be done by Dr. Sign. And that's still very much is the same because, of course, every shares, as far as I'm aware, every shares that enact and ultimately aren't it back in any numbers in the office. We're, obviously, we're back in the office 50% numbers every day. So, so DocuSign was one thing that they were allowed. Obviously, the um, other thing that they have permitted is the remote signing. Um, so, those clients that you know, aren't able to do it because they are self isolating or the vote. I've had a number of clients stuck in Egypt, Dubai, Italy, Spain, all, all not able to actually get back to the country. This is before. Right, yeah. We did the remote signing then with this calls over Skype um, and Zoom with, our, with one of our solicitor team over to, calling into the client with, and making sure there's an independent witness present so they could do the independent witness route on those meetings. But by and large, it's more or less business as usual. I think. The only delays we've seen is, of course, you know, the likes of um, some of the sources because not being as frequently, original documents aren't being picked up as quickly. Um, and certainly there are, you know, across the board, you know, cases, you know, I, I would always say in the old days, Jane, I'm only talking before March, if I saw customers in, a, in the office on a Monday, I could, you know, time to get back to it, so on a Wednesday, I'd have redemption, I'd have completion statements in from the likes of you know, Aviva and, and, and others, whereas, you know, I'm not going to know 
a, fly, a way of living, a five day turnaround. We, we took looking at generally one week, possibly about two weeks to get a completion statement in. So, so completions have dramatically slowed. Yeah, because I mean, it, we were at the beginning or the end of last year, beginning of this year, seeing completions within the month, weren't we? Yes. Between application and completion. Yeah. So it's looking more like what we're seeing six to eight weeks now for the yeah. process. We, we always reckon roughly two to three weeks of completion for when we send the schedule off. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm from, up from completion, but yeah, two, mm -hmm. two weeks. Uh, I just want to just cover off a little bit more about vulnerable clients, because obviously yes. we get some people that are hard of hearing. And, you know, how do your solicitors cope with that? Or um, well, so it's, it's, it's certainly, well um, um, it, I know we, we also want to do as, as well, the um, language barriers as well, because I've had a few, uh, several Greek clients recently uh, who we would advise that they could speak English, but when we got there, they couldn't. So, oh dear. So, so yes, this was a 93-year-old um, fearsome Greek lady uh, who weren't sure whether she had capacity or not. And our traveling solicitor in this case, um, and we do have bilingual, not multilingual traveling solicitors, um, we can speak Hindi and, and other languages. Then we were concerned that children conversing with mother in Greek, but her English was very, very pidgin, is that the right expression? Um, yep. And obviously, um, I sent a Greek translator in that case, and it turned out she didn't have capacity. The Greek translator actually um, used to work for the Equitable East Council, so I know her very well, and knew, knew I could trust her judgment. So, when it's a foreign language, we'll, we'll, you know, and because we can't rely on the children necessarily to interpret and of course they, they, they can be telling you anything at least with a, a professional mm -hmm. interpreter per se. Um, in relation to, to hearing issues it very much depends on the extent of the, of the, of the hearing de um, deficiency so um, we will always you know speak clearly and loudly um, and try to express ourselves in different ways to ensure that we're understood in relation to poor sight, that's an easier one to overcome since it's, you know, obviously we can read, we would read all the documents to the customer. If, if all right. Yeah, we'd be requesting the vendors produce documents in Braille, which I know some do. Yeah. Um, if, if they were, if they were um, able to read Braille. Otherwise, we will literally read word for word every single document and then we will sign it. So. Um, if we have any doubts as to capacity, you know, certainly, the team of the office are very good at picking things up, and if they have doubts, they will raise us with the traveling solicitor before they go there just to say, please, can you watch out for this? And again, if, if we've been dealing largely with the children or with the carer or with a friend, we will say, right, make sure that at some point of the meeting, you escort the friend or the family member away from the meeting. And if it's a small house, they can go for a walk. If it's a larger house, put them in a different side of the house that they can't be heard. Excellent. Um, that's something perhaps the advisors need to know, actually, so that they can guide their uh, clients, especially when there's family involved. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, you've been using new ways of communicating. You know, do you use Zoom? You've obviously used Zoom for people abroad, perhaps, or yeah, Skype. We use, yes, we use Zoom, Skype, and Teams. Um, I myself have had a meeting on Teams um, with, a, with a client in the family, which was um, great, which was went, went very well. Um, so, and I think I think sometimes we're where we wrongly assume that our clients aren't very capable, but what I found is amazing. C customers are quite far better than we are using this equipment. So yes, we've, we've, we've had, you know, we've even had WhatsApp calls, uh, you know, for WhatsApp. Yeah, calls, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and FaceTime calls as well. So whatever, whatever, whatever's going, we will use. So equipment. Well, we've all changed, haven't we? All changed with the times and technology exactly. um, a new way of doing business uh, which has got to be good um, so um, sort of rounding up is there any other questions we need to think we need to cover off with the process or vulnerability um, no I think so the, the only thing I would really say is from the advisor's point is please don't be frightened if you have any concerns do let, it, do let us know yeah. straight away um, I'd also say just because somebody is aged and I'm talking over 90 um, or, you know, um, it just with our early, early stage of dementia, so it doesn't mean that they've lost capacity and had to be have to be treated in a certain way. And I did a visit before the lockdown in Cheltenham. Yep. Saw, I went to see a 96-year-old lady, was greeted at the door by her daughter, 
I just remember walked in. As I walked in, she said, well, Peter, so you, you, you've gone further than the previous solicitor, who the minute her mother was 96, refused to see her and walked away. And I then had a 40 minute argument with mother about, about um, Brexit. And um, she roundly thrashed me in the argument and was, was bright as a button. <laughs> a shame. So I think we can't judge a book by its cover. No. You know, j just for someone tells you that, that the family member has, has uh, mental Ill, uh, no one has such as Alzheimer's at the we must treat them on a case by case basis. And don't be frightened to give us a heads up. You're going to say to me, and I know my own father, if I speak to my dad at 11 o'clock in the morning, he's bright as a button. If I speak to him at 1 30 after his other's lunch, it's like he's had 14 gins because the, the food is it's trying to be dissolved in his body. So if there is a better time for the clients, then do that, isn't it? And I think I would, my final point, Jim, would be, you know, I very much see Ashford and the financial advisors and yourselves as, as a team, you know, working to get the best service possible for the client. So we will always work with you um, to try and get the best results. Well, that's excellent. Um, I think that's really good feedback for the advisors because the advisors are there, here to help. And if they can try and sort of make it streamless, stressless for the clients and prepare them, mm. um, I think that's perfect. So that perhaps your sort of um, bedside manner, solicitors calling it home is, is a nice touch. Um, so, so thank you for that. Thank you for your time, Peter, and that's covering good. all that off. Um, thank you to the audience. Um, please keep your questions coming. We're hoping to do a session just on legal for any problem queries, questions that you have for us, for, for Peter. Um, I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget, if you produce a care file from our platform, we plant a tree. Thank you. Thank you.